hi everyone this is Laura and today I am going to do a tutorial on something I actually found last night I was so excited when I did um, was browsing the net last night catching up on some vids and I saw in one of the stores that they actually had um, a sale going on and let me show you what they I mean now these are not the same as <laughs> they're not the same that they were selling but this is what I did this is what I was working on last night guys these are pinwheels I finally made some pinwheels I was so excited I had to do a tutorial and let me tell you what um, one of the reasons well th there was three reasons why this pinwheel tutorial caught my eye I have loved pinwheels since I was a babe um, pinwheels and summer to me go hand in hand and there was never a summer that I can recall in my brain right now where um, up until maybe I was about 11 12 that I did not have a pinwheel and back in the days and I don't know if they still sell them like that but um, they used to sell the pinwheels with the big long straws coming down and the little red stopper on the bottom and it was all filled with candy um, they used to spin around, so I used to, of course, have my hand hanging out of my mother and father's car, just watching the pinwheel going around, while she was constantly yelling at me, stick your hand in the car, you're going to lose it. <laughs> oh, yes, those are the fond memories I have of my um, pinwheel summer days. Um, so when I saw them, I think it was Webster Pages. I'm really not sure, guys. It was really late, and I was looking more at the product rather than who actually made them. But it made me curious, so I decided to look it up on YouTube, and I did find that Lawn Fawn has a tutorial on how to make these pinwheels, and I'll have a link of that video in the description box. However, I did make it my own, and I tweaked it a little bit only because... I couldn't do it the way they, they did it. I tried. It hurt my hands way too much, and I found this to be easier. So let's get started. Oh, and uh, I just wanted to show you a few of, that I made. I made this one, and this one I have with a button. I made this one on a stick, and this one I put a little piece of bling in the center. This one I put a brad. As you can see there and I also put this on a stick and I did it that way the first couple of one with the brads but I won't be doing it like that um, again and I'll show you why in a minute um, in the two and I also made more with buttons and I just love 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 them what I also love about these is that you get to use up all your scrap pieces of paper which is something else I've been wanting to do embellishments other than flowers where I can not only gift them but use them and use up these scraps so yep that's what I was doing last night I was cutting up all kinds of squares from my leftover stash now I will say this I do happen to like the double-sided designer papers um, for this project a lot more than the plain cardstock it just gives it a little bit more of a nicer appearance what I also find is this is great to do while you're watching TV because it's really not that hard once you start making them and the best part about it is once you do it with the paper if you mess it up chuck it it's a piece of scrap paper that you had in your scrap stash anyway um, so let's get started with what you're going to need to make these and then I'll talk as I work hopefully um, you're gonna need a need a paper piercer and you're only going to need the paper piercer if you decide to do it with the brads and I'll explain that as well um, you're going to need some two by two squares you can either use scrap paper new paper doesn't matter um, I only have cardstock pieces here I don't know what this project would look like with some lighter weight paper I've I only have the cardstock so I can only speak about the cardstock you're gonna need a pair of pliers um, again only if you decide to go with the brads and I'll show you why in a minute you're gonna need some buttons blings some glue some scissors um, 
Now, while I was watching TV, I decided to go with this glue right here and it worked wonderfully. And my good friend Sharon, who's Soro Leel, um, one here on YouTube, she was the one that told me about this. Thank you, Shay Shay. This saved me a lot. For the purpose of this video, however, I am going to be using my hot glue gun only because it's faster, it's quicker, and I will have my little finger that M gave me. Thank you, M. Saves me a lot. And I will be using my buttons. Yes, I finally get to use all those amazing buttons. So let's get started. Um, like I said, you're going to start off with a square that's two by two. Oh, well, I use, I wanted to make little ones. I didn't want to make big ones. And I'm going to I'm going to make these two by two because I just found this video yesterday, but I'm actually going to try to even make them smaller. I'm going to try it with a one inch square and I'll get back to you and tell you how that goes because the two by twos weren't that easy for me with my fingers, but I have issues with my fingers, guys, that you may not, so you might be able to do it just fine. Um, and like I said, I'll get back to you with that. So how I started out, have my two by two, my um, two by two square and with my scissors I went to each corner and I just cut not all the way to the center but close enough and I don't know if you guys can see that where it's almost at the center and what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut each corner but you don't want them to touch you see what I mean you're gonna cut each corner each corner of the square gonna cut it and you're gonna leave I'm gonna say um, maybe a quarter of an inch from the center because you're gonna need that center and you don't want any um, rips or tears here and again you're gonna cut each corner so when you cut each corner this is what you're basically gonna be left with you see that you see that guys and you see how my center is now if you feel more comfortable knowing where your center is at and you're not a visual person what you can do is you can take a ruler and draw a line here and draw a line here get your center point and that way you can cut um, I just eyeball it only because I think it's a little bit easier and faster for me so once I've made my cuts on the corners, on each corner, then you're going to decide whether or not you want to um, add some ink to your pinwheel. Now I did not do the other ones with, um, with distress ink. I did, however, do this one and I did like the way it looked. Um, so I decided to use my barn barn door yes barn door and I'm just gonna just um, stress this just a little bit and I decided to go with red because of the little red dots in the paper and the next one I'll probably do orange and then so on and so forth and I am gonna also um, just add a little ink to these little edges in here again it doesn't have to be perfect if you don't like the look of the distress, you most certainly don't have to do it. If it makes the project look a little too sloppy to you, you most certainly don't have to do it. But I wanted to. So now, what you want to do is you're going to go to the top right corner of each side. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick up that little flap the triangle and you're gonna pull it to the center like so then when you go over to the next one and why don't I glue that down just so you can see and I might do this a few times just to make sure you guys get it I have my little glue at the center I'm gonna push this down I'm gonna need my finger now and just press it here and you see how that stayed there in place now let me get another glue stick because I no, I'm still not running low. Now I'm gonna make another little dot 
and these are just the smallest of little glue dots and then I'm gonna do the same thing and push the next one down next to that one and make sure that I can get it as close to each other as I possibly can you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna go to the next one and you're always going to go to the same corner that you started out with this corner the one that is see if I was holding it this way it would be the one on the right if I was holding it this way it would be the one on the right if I was holding it this way it would be the little corner on the right it's always the same little corner on the right and I hope I'm not confusing you guys because when I hold it up it's on the left but if you're looking at it the other way it's always the little corner to the right and you're gonna glue that one down and you're gonna do the same thing all the way around now how simple is that I'm gonna take my little glue finger now I'm gonna hold it down for a few minutes and if you feel that it needs more glue by all means oh I'm sorry I was pulling on a glue string and I went out of camera and what you're gonna be left with is this beautiful little pinwheel now you have a choice as to what kind of a center you can put and just to give you guys an idea how you are not limited you can put even a flower how cute is that but like I said my purpose I'm trying to use up as many brads as I can and buttons only because I have so many of these so now what I want to do is I want to add um, a center so I'm going to go ahead and apply some more of this hot glue oh wait my little leaves my, um, my folds did come up a sec hold on there we go I don't think I added enough glue. There we go. I'm going to add a little bead of glue there. Pick out a nice pretty button. Boo, those guys sure don't want to stay down. Well, not with the button, of course, they'll stay down. And I added a little button to the center. And look at how cute. I am so addicted to these now. Okay, so since I'm addicted, let's do another one. Um, and this one I want to show you uh, because of the brads. Now, I, I'm i going to cut this again for you, but I have already pre-cut a few of them. Again, you're going to go to the corners. You're going to look at it almost like it's a diamond. You're going to go to the corners. And you're just going to snip without going all the way up. You're going to snip each triangle piece and you only want to go I want to say three quarters of the way up you see like so and when you're done you're gonna have one two three four flaps like I said it's best to use the double-sided paper I think it's the prettiest now these are just some of the ones that I was um, cutting and playing with last night um, I was prepping quite a few of them um, just so that I can show you for the purpose of the video um, how to make these. So I wanted to show you the one with the brad. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna distress this one because um, I just wanted to show you the, um, and like I said they look pretty both with ink and without so let me just glue this real quick and then I can show you what I mean about the breads and again you add a little glue to the center push one I'm gonna call them petals and you push one of these down here in the center you know it's so funny because I have that little pink finger Thingy, and I always forget to put them back on when I take it off and some of the papers depending on what you have on them for instance this one 
is embossed with glitter. So the um, paper is a little tiny bit harder to um, manipulate and maneuver without it looking bent. But that's okay because if you use it on the layout, it's going to get squished on anyway. And see, I have my four little corner points attached. Um, what I do with the brad is this. If sometimes, and I don't know if you can see the back of this, do you see these lines? They all come pretty darn close to the middle. Sometimes when you pierce this, if the feet on the breads, and these are the large breads, these are not the tiny ones, if they are very wide, when you pierce your paper, and you put it through, it can kind of make um, a really large, gosh, I got butter fingers today. You see how wide that is? You see what I'm saying? These two pieces, there's only but a little bit of space that separates them. And if I were to stick this bread, as much as I love the way the breads look, if I stick the bread in there, chances are these two pieces of paper are going to rip in half. And my pinwheel is going to fall apart. Now, that did happen already to me. Um, trying to find out. Find the one. Find the one. Oh, here it is. And I had to add glue to it because when I when I pushed it through, do you see what I'm saying right here? It, it tore the paper. You see that? Now, this is still salvageable for myself and for a layout. Um, but if you notice, there's a big space here that really shouldn't be there. It should be more like that. So although I love the breads, I did not like that it did that. So my alternative to that was to, and I've seen everybody using these dots. Everybody's going crazy buying these dots. Well, guess what, guys? Those dots have been forever. They've just been on breads, <laughs> the enamel dots. Um, for those of you who have breads home and don't want to buy enamel dots, just cut off the back and glue it down. That's it. You have enamel dots. So what I do is I take a bread. I use those pliers that I told you I stole from hubby. I push it down as far as I can, and I just squeeze and take those little feet off. Now they're off. I squeeze whatever's um, sticking out in the back. I squeeze it. I will add some a nice little ball of hot glue there. And that's why I love my hot glue gun because it's instant. One, two, three, and we're done. I will push that in the center. And voila, and you have a beautiful bread, and it didn't rip, and you didn't have to um, fuss with the piercing and then pushing it through, hoping it doesn't split your paper. Then, of course, you got to pull the little feet in the back. And this is another thing that I love about using my brads this way now. I don't have anything in the back to show for it. Even on my layouts, this is how I use my brads now. It's something old. I brought it back, and I'm using it in a different way. Um, but I, I really love the way the pinwheels look with the bread because um, it reminds me of what the real pinwheels look like when I was little. Um, they look like they had giant brads in the centers. Okay, so let's say you want to add a stick to it. What I've done, again, another great use for that wonderful tool that I stole from my husband. Um, I have these toothpicks I bought in the 99 cent store. I, Of course, these are the ones with the rounded pointy tip on them. And I don't want anyone getting hurt should I decide to gift a few away or on my layouts with my family. So what I do is I just cut the tips off. And they're that easy to cut off. Look, one, two, three, boop. Of course, you might have flying bits and pieces all over your scrapbooking area, but that's okay. Then what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of glue. I'll put my stick there. 
I'll hold on to it for a few minutes and I, I like to glue it up against one of the folds. I don't know why, I just do. I think it gives it a little bit more support. Then I go with my little finger and I squish it down just to make sure that it stays in place and it is. And guys, if you don't want, oops, wait, I have a little string here. If you don't want this to show, now I didn't do it yet again. Um, I was making the video. Um, if you don't want that sh to show, just take another piece of the same paper, cut out a small little circle and glue it on that and that way you don't even see the stick. Now I did make a mistake with this stick. I should have glued it a little bit more over. Um, my fault. And it should have been more on this side. So I am going to fix that real quick. Hopefully I won't tear my paper to death. Oopsies. There we go. So that is my pinwheel on a stick. And how pretty is that? So guys, like I said, you can have them like this. You can pre-cut them, get them all ready while you're watching TV. Boop, boop, boop. And you can make yourself a whole bunch of beautiful little pinwheels while you're watching some TV. Or maybe you're just watching some vids. I hope you like this tutorial. I don't make too many of them, I know. But I just had to share my pinwheels because I'm so excited. Um, and by the way, guys, what the price I saw for four of these, and I'm not kidding you, they didn't even have the sticks. There was about four of these. And if I'm not mistaken, they were, I think it was $455. Um, and they had them on sale. I think it was $299. Um, a little bit of time, a few scraps, and some glue. And you can save yourself and make them as big or as small as you want. Like I said, I'm going to work on some one-inch ones. I don't know if I'm going to have the ability to um, fold them because I have a problem with the smaller, more intricate ones. But hoo-hoo, pinwheels, what fun. I love them. And I will be busy making more. So... Hope you guys like and try them. I'll be talking to you soon. Have a blessed day. Bye now.